Hey guys, I'm E, and in this video, I'm gonna help people who love to edit football videos and soccer videos, more specifically for recruiting or coaching purposes. Because I'm gonna show you exactly how to track a player visually, and trust me, it's a lot easier than you think, so much so that I'm gonna teach you how to do it in less than two minutes. Okay. The clip I'm going to use the tracker effect on is this one. I'm going to track Ryan Grant here at the bottom of the screen as he runs towards the net and scores the winning goal in the grand final of the A-League, the domestic soccer league here in Australia. So first I go in Photoshop and create the actual tracker. I like to keep it simple so I'm just going to create a circle with the player's name at the bottom and make it black so that it ends up looking almost like a shadow. I know I could be doing all of this in After Effects, but I'm trying to stay out of it for now so that my two minute claim in the title remains sort of accurate. And also, in all honesty, I'm not that good with After Effects. So anything I can do outside of it to keep my workflow inside of After Effects as simple and easy as possible, I will do. Just before we jump into After Effects, I just want to remind you guys, especially all the football coaches out there, that you can create custom jerseys for yourself or your entire team through a website by the name of F Custom. That's where I made this sweet custom baseball jersey, which I love. The quality of the stitching and the materials is honestly beyond my expectations and the prices are actually quite reasonable. In fact, if you use my promo code BEYONDTHEGAMETV, all in one word, you'll even get an extra 10% discount on your entire order. So if you need a custom baseball, basketball, or of course football jersey, simply use the link in the description below to visit F Custom and make sure to use my promo code BEYONDTHEGAMETV. So now that I'm in After Effects and I imported the visual tracker I just made as well as my clip, first thing first, I will create a new composition by right-clicking on the clip, then select New Comp from Selection. In the New Comp, I'm right-clicking on my timeline, New, and select Null Object. Then I'm going to open my tracker window and click on Track Motion. Now, personally, I leave everything in there the way it is by default, except for one thing. I go in Options and change the drop-down menu at the bottom to Stop Tracking. Because if you don't do that, every time the tracker loses its tracking point, it's going to try to guess where it is and start tracking in all sorts of crazy directions. Which you'll have to stop and then go back to the point where it all went crazy and then start again from there. So in my opinion, you might as well don't rely on it too much and just make it stop every time it's not sure of what it's doing. Anyway, now I want to identify my tracking point, which is done by those two squares right there. The inside square is the actual track point, and the outside square is the area in which After Effects is going to search for that track point. So the bigger you make the outside square, the more taxing it's going to be on your machine, so the longer it's going to take your computer to track the entire clip. In this case, I'm going to track Ryan's head, because if I tried to track his entire body, it would be very difficult for After Effects to do a good tracking job because there's too many different colors and too many moving parts. Whereas head, on the other hand, stands out very well. So now all I need to do is click the play button. And as I mentioned earlier, the analyzing process is going to stop frequently. So all you need to do is readjust your track point if necessary and press play again. If it keeps stopping at every frame, it's probably because there's something in your footage at that particular moment that makes it very hard to track so you might have to do a few frames by hand. In that case, you basically move forward in your timeline, adjust the track point, move forward again, adjust the track point again, and so on. As you can see, I had to track this clip manually quite a lot, so in retrospect, maybe I would have been better off tracking his shorts or a stop, but anyway. Once the tracker is done analyzing, I just click apply and then okay. Now I can drag the graphic I created earlier on my timeline, resize it. I'll also click here and make it a 3D layer so that I can give it roughly the same sort of angle as the ground. Move it exactly where my player's feet are. Then I come here to this drop down menu, select my null object layer, and now we can finally see that the tracking is working. 
all that's left to do is make my graphic look a bit better by changing the blending mode to soft light and maybe playing with the opacity a little bit. And there you have it. King can keep it in. Here is Retro. Bratton demanding. Picking out right, Brat! Chesting it home! The kick from Canavra! So this is it. I hope it was clear and simple enough for everyone. If any of you guys have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments. I'll get back to you ASAP. Otherwise, I encourage you to join our sports videography community on Facebook. That's the perfect place to ask questions and get answers straight away, not only from me, but from, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say millions. At the moment, I think we're 1300 or so. So yeah, there's plenty of sports videographers there to help you and help me. So if you haven't already, you should definitely think about joining. Otherwise, thank you again for watching. My name is E and I hope I earned the privilege of your time.